Uh, we had the tools, we had the talent. All right, everybody, we are here with Roman Abilov. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, correctly. Cool. And uh, we're thankful to have him here. He has invented the, uh, I believe you're the original creator, if I'm not mistaken, of the Keen Tools uh, sets. I know you have a team of people that work on it, obviously, but are you the founder? You're oh, the yeah, founder. I'm a founder. I can't say that like I'm original uh, creator because we, uh, from the very beginning, we were a team of people. Uh, actually, the, so we started, like, I wasn't alone. <laughs> so... Cool. Yeah, and yep. obviously, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, the Keen tools, definitely check out the link below. Um, this tool is used very often. Uh, the studio that I work for, and even myself independently, uh, once you know we uh, rent these tool sets. Uh, sometimes you get in situations that uh, there's a whole bunch of different aspects to the different tool sets. Uh, we use GeoTracker uh, for like replacement of arms. Uh, and specifically, like face, kind of like capturing the facial animation of of a person. Actually, even building out a model of a person, which can be used for its many aspects. But I won't kind of bore with my version of it. Um, but if you are curious, <clears throat> I have the Keen Tools link. I have Roman's a LinkedIn. Um, it's to kind of learn more about it. And uh, we did have. Um, I'm sorry. The name of your uh, was it Antov? Did I, did I say, say it right? Uh, we had him last time, and he did a great demonstration. <clears throat> but as of now, um, I contacted Keen Tools because there was updates and so forth, and was hoping there would be sort of a kind of a sharing of the newest kind of tool sets, uh, up updates and so forth, and uh, that has kind of come forth from Keen Tools. So, did you want to kind of talk about that a little bit, Roman, before we start out? Uh, well, it's actually. Uh, um it's been a while since our Tom was in your show. It was like uh, two years ago. Uh, I've opened um, the list of uh, changes, like what's new, and uh, looked through it. And I actually understood that it was quite a lot of uh, changes during these two years. Um, sometimes, uh, like even I'd say several changes. I, I thought they were introduced probably like five years ago or something, because it was. It's nowadays. It's. Um, it feels like it was really a long time ago. Um, but yeah, and I've actually want to go through like new features because it's uh, probably not a new pipeline or something, but it's like lots of different improvements here and there. And uh, actually, we all know as compositors that all uh, issues always in some small details. And today, I hopefully, will can uh, like explain how to tackle with some complex cases. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to uh, Roman's side, and he's going to be uh, doing a couple demonstrations for us. So we'll go ahead and jump over. Okay, we are back. I am recording your screen. Um, so, Roman, if you could uh, go ahead and just give us uh, in uh, kind of like a bird's eye view, I guess, of some of the updates. And again, this is a plugin for Nuke, and it's also a plugin for After Effects. And even for myself, I just started poking around at the new tool sets. Um, it's interesting that you now have a sort of system set up with Keen Tools as far as the face builder to connect to the Unreal Engine's uh, MetaHumans, which is pretty exciting. So uh, I'll guess I'll just leave it on the floor uh, and I'll let you take the floor, so to speak. Well, I actually want to start uh, a little bit differently because uh, um, I want to start with a short show reel, which is not yet public, so it will gonna be probably the first uh, time it's uh, publicly shown to something uh, some uh, somebody and uh, probably you will find your works here and uh, here you are.
Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting how much your business has, uh, your studio has grown into. I really didn't understand a lot on Geo Tracker until I've actually used it in production, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, there was a specific uh, scene in our uh, comps that we did for a show where somebody had a, uh, the actor had broken their um, their arm in pr middle of production and needed a cast. And so we needed to replace the cast with a new arm for half of the shots. Oh, and nice. Geo Tracker became a saving, uh, amazing tool that just saved the day, so to, spe so to speak, just to track the hand and replace it. And so it's just amazing how you guys keep, you know, innovating with tool, cool sets. But I mean, I'm going to stop blabbering. <laughs> it's funny that uh, usually on, like, for example, on some exhibitions, uh, conferences, we see exactly this phrase, like, you saved our time and it was like the main idea behind GeoTracker so it's not that innovative I mean like tracking is already like a task that was solved many times in uh, cinema like in VFX uh, there are like lots of different approaches uh, that are already uh, were available when we started but GeoTracker was from the day one is uh, something to save time to do it in like in in a most productive way and uh, yeah actually this show reel was done by uh, like there's a lots of folks of our lovely users from students individuals students and uh, you know how actually hard to get some breakdowns from studios because it all covered with three layers of nda yeah and no kidding like, <laughs> and uh, but to be honest, it was uh, like hopefully next time it's gonna be a little bit easier. But uh, thank you, thank you all for like participation and like in the community because actually because of you we are creating new features and um, uh, it's like not only because you like pay for it, but it also because. You you inventing it and uh, we listen to you and like introduce these features and uh, our tools. And uh, today I want to go through like pretty broad agenda, and if I will showcase everything uh, manually, it will like take us probably several hours. So that's why I've decided to like showcase a little like some some things I will show. And some things I will show like in recording because actually we've created some materials already and it's probably like the fastest and like the most compact way to show it. But like Matthew, it's uh, on your side to ask questions and to ask tricky questions how to use it and so on. I'll try my best. <laughs> well, and let's uh, start with GeoTracker then. Because uh, GeoTracker is uh, like the tool which was uh, the first one, and actually it was like the whole idea was uh, around tracking geometries. And um, the first thing that I want to show is like focal length estimation, and then we talk a little bit about how to set up uh, keyframes in a most consistent way. So that the geometry is aligned uh, consistently between different keyframes, and uh, the same points actually represent the same points on the uh, geometry surface. And um, then we like touch a little bit more complex geometries, namely geometries with uh, rigs and uh, skeletons. And uh, and yeah, I like will take an opportunity and like just touch a little bit after FX thing. Then something very interesting. Um, it's blend shapes pipeline. It's a new pipeline that we've introduced in Nuke and uh, which is already quite popular amongst several studios. And uh, it will definitely like some attention from you. 
uh, because it gives lots of like new abilities uh, inside new. And uh, and then we're going to talk about Phase Builder because quite a lot of new features were introduced to Phase Builder, and uh, in the very end we're going to talk a little bit a bit uh, about Phase Tracker, but like. To be like honest, the major updates to Face Tracker are coming this year, so like just stay tuned. We are working on something really great, and the quality of tracking will be drastically improved. Any uh, any uh, sneak preview as far as an exact timeline on that? <laughs> Hard to say. We just finished with planning for this year, gotcha. Gotcha. and. Uh, uh, usually, I'm really afraid of giving any estimates uh, because, you know, like, uh, as you said, it's pretty innovative tool. Any innovation, like, uh, uh, can't be done without uh, investigations. Yeah, and well, that's investi smart, yeah. I won't hold you any date then, sorry. <laughs> it means pretty unpredictable. Pretty un unpredictable if you do something new. Okay, so focal length estimation. Uh, I will switch to Nuke. It's going to be a Nuke 14, because um, let's always stay with the latest version. For me, it's pretty unstable, to be honest. Uh, I, like Sometimes it like just crashes uh, in, in a very simple ways. But yeah, let, let, let's uh, talk a little bit about cameras because it's very important and usually uh, it's like not obvious. So uh, I've created a simple camera, like standard camera in Nuke, and it's like 50 millimeters focal length and some very strange default horizontal and ve vertical aperture. I don't know why these numbers. Uh, um, usually, uh, like, let's probably switch to something like more yeah, the, me. the default thirty-six twenty-four. Yeah. And uh, well, okay, let's start with like with just cube. So let's say we have a cube. We uh, okay, uh, yeah, that run you know you know like in uh, Nuke fourteen introduced new geometries, and we haven't yet. Uh, support this new geometry pipeline. So now in uh, our uh, menu, it looks like 3D Classic, which was before uh, Nuke 14. And now they like have uh, USD uh, entities right inside uh, um, um, right inside Nuke, and uh, we haven't yet supported them. So and yeah, and I'm now I always like a little bit crazy about is it a classic or or, or not classic cube <laughs> when created. So let's create classic cube for now. And uh, geometry cube. Okay, it was classical. And uh, and uh, yeah, let's switch to 3D. It's our camera. I like drag it here here. Here and uh, yeah, let's probably rotate it a little bit, um, like this. So now, if I switch to camera view, it looks like this. Okay, probably I need to rotate it a little bit uh, more in y-axis, like this. Feels pretty okay. So now. Uh, and I will also add some probably checkerboard uh, as a texture. And let's also have some constant image. And now let's render it. Scan and render, camera, <coughs> or background, and up. And up. Oh gosh. Because it's wrong scan line render, we need a. <laughs> Classic. Um, I, I have yet to take a look at 14 yet, but yeah, I've been hearing it's uh, there's quite some interesting changes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna have some fun with it when you switch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and uh, and yeah, here we are. So now we have a cube here, and obviously, if we change focal lengths, it will like also change how the cube looks like. It looks closer and further, but it's not the only change. It also uh, the projection, the way how it looks, uh, also also changes with changing of focal lengths. And um, let's now create geo tracker. Really close. And um, connected to the same camera. Oh gosh. I don't have. I don't have a uh, license for my tools. That's great. Expires in one day. Yeah, one okay. day left. <laughs> uh, I've actually like because uh, we were introducing new licensing uh, fairly uh, like uh, not so long time ago, and I was actively testing it. What is really for our individual users? We've introduced monthly subscriptions, which is uh, really really affordable, especially in contrast to everything else. In uh, so, and now we have geometry and the ground. Okay. So, oh no, oh god, I've changed, I've changed. Uh, no, 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 not this camera. Of course, through this camera, it looks uh, correctly. Like, <laughs> but uh, I will create a new camera now. And let's say this camera, and let's say I know camera um, type, so I can specify aperture. So, uh, and let's switch to this camera. Yes. Yeah. So now in GeoTracker, we can like click center geo, we can drag these uh, things and like as probably lots of uh, our viewers know, when I drag these pins, I'm actually changing the position of the input geometry to GeoTracker uh, in 3D space. So if I create one more viewer here, uh, and uh, put them side by side, switch it to 3D, and uh, yeah, so now, when I drag pins, you see it, like, you change the position of the cube right in 3D space. So it's a cool way to set up your scene. Actually, even if you don't want to track it, you can use uh, this approach. It's pretty fast to uh, scene alignment and to align objects inside the scene. And actually, it's even free, because there is a free tool which is called Pin Tool, uh, which does exactly this without tracking, but it like really great tool for for alignment. And um, so here we can now try to fit the cube as precisely as it's possible. So I put it here, here, and here. And, and here, and like, sorry, let me switch off uh, this Litva frame. No, it's like better visible what's going on. And actually, like, seems I've done it like pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. All good, yeah? But the reason for it is actually because uh, this camera has like 51 focal lengths, this one has 50, more or less the same. Let's change it. For instance, switch it to, I don't know, like 15. So the original camera, which we use for rendering, for filming, 
now has a different focal length, like this. And, uh, and let's probably drag it a little bit closer to see it better. Like, uh, three, seems we would be lost to keep why so. Uh, where is our camera? Where is our cube? Oh, okay. Too close. Oh, good. Sorry. And, uh, where is our cube? Look through the camera, yeah, like this. And uh, what's wrong there? Yeah, all good now. So in GeoTracker now, when we try to fit the model, we will have some obstacles. And they are pretty geometry-based obstacles. So let me delete this in. And uh, yeah, so I will I will first place the model here. Oh gosh, it's still looks okay right so one second and it, just for the audience oh, okay. to be aware um, at this point obviously most compositors know this but any lens distortion should be removed before this process yes of course but actually like when we play with uh, these kind of cameras uh, there's no lens distortion, right? Well, obviously, yeah. It's, it's, it's like yeah. perfect straight that, perspective lines, yeah. That's why it's uh, a little bit easier. And, uh, yeah, I have a little bit uh, change the position of the camera. Uh, last time I lit, I've added, made it again for the wrong camera because I've... Uh, clicked control Z one more time and it still was uh, 55. Okay, let's say we have like, let's, we see a portion of cube, like this one, a small portion of cube. And now we have focal length 25 and in GeoTracker, uh, I will, oh, I will show you one more feature, which is also new and it's called toggle pins. So, because currently I have one, two, three, four, five pins and when I drag it, other pins actually like still on their place. And if I click toggle pins, now all the pins became yellow. And uh, they are kind of non-active. So when I drag yellow pin, it becomes red. And all other yellow pins doesn't really uh, change the um, like we don't use them for you know, so, and to solve the projection or to solve the position of the model so now i can actually like activate them one by one and yeah let's try to fit it uh something like this and this and you clearly can see that like it's impossible because of the wrong focal lengths. Because now these lines, like this and this line, like they go to like significantly bigger angle than it's possible uh, with uh, this 50 lengths uh, focal length, uh, 50 millimeter focal lengths of the original camera. So now, what I can do here is just uh, the way how we calculate it. 
So we can say that we will not use the focal length from camera, but we want to, like, some arbitrary fixed focal lengths. And now I actually can um, change it. Uh, on results tab, there is a, uh, a knob which is called focal length. And when I change it, you see how it changes the uh, geometry. Oh, control Z doesn't work properly here. We'll definitely fix it. Uh, let's see what, what's going on. Like, you see what, how it works. So now you can try to find a correct focal length for, for, for your cube. It's like, let, let's toggle pins again. And let's try to uh, place the cube one more time. Like the, this time, I will remove pins, and uh, hopefully, you can see what's going on here. But yeah, now I can set up the pins and try to. Yeah, now I see. I clearly see that there are some issues. I can, for example, switch spring pins back, which actually, when I drag, you see this uh, blue rope between pin and the surface point. When, I've, uh, when I'm releasing my mouse, uh, if I have spring pins back, this rope are like going to zero and the point maps back to uh, the surface. If, uh, if it's switched on, but if it's switched off, then you can actually like say that this point should be there and please don't move it at all. So sometimes, for example, here it's pretty good approach. So, okay, let's move pins again and uh, this pin should be there, this pin should be there, here. This one somewhere here, I can imagine, and this one like here. So now I can try to change focal length of my um, camera and see what's going on. Like, okay, something like this, probably. Yeah, now more or less okay. And it gives me like focal length 22 which is basically pretty close to the one I set for the original camera, like 20, which was used for solving, uh, for filming the uh, shot. But, again, um, it's pretty tedious process. So, there's one, like, like, there's a small tick here, which called S8 focal lengths. And now, drag pins, it will automatically try to estimate focal lengths which fits uh, pins in a best way. Something like this. And uh, you see now it's like exactly 25.00, which basically means that we found the correct focal lengths of the camera, which was uh, used for filming this uh, checkerboard cube. And which is cool, which actually gives the ability to uh, recreate focal lengths based on your geometry. And uh, it's great when you like have, it's uh, fairly easy, but sometimes, uh, for instance, you have uh, some like object of very strange geometry, for example, face or something like this, and it like helps you to solve the shot. Um, yeah, it's it's not really visible feature, but very helpful. Uh, let's go further then. I think. It's pretty enough with focal length estimation. And now let's talk a little bit about keyframes consistency. And for this I have like a small video. And let me show you.
and yeah, and actually the uh, speaker has much better English than me. Oops, it's a little bit wrong one. This one. When you track geometry with our tools, your main focus should be on keyframe consistency, meaning that the 3D object has to reflect the position of the tracked object precisely in each keyframe. That's where you'd want a stabilized viewport, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. To switch the stabilization on, simply press the Stabilize View button on the toolbar. We improved the stabilization algorithm, so now it is not just placing the 3D object in the center of the viewer. It retains its position wherever it is. It means you can stabilize the object with any zoom level and viewport position. More than that, now... It's funny that we actually stabilize object and watch is moving is a like border of the frame. So we move the frame uh, in a way that the object uh, in the position you like. So like, like this. Oh gosh. Um. When you track geometry, more than that, now you have the ability to stabilize the object around the selected pins. When the stabilization is on, simply select one or more pins and start the playback. To return to the stabilization around the object, Deselect pins by clicking the left mouse button anywhere in the viewport outside of the object. Of course, the new stabilization works with any kind of frame changes, whether it is playback, manual frame by frame jumping, jumping between keyframes, or even the tracking process. You can also use stabilization while working with our face tracker node. I could see that being very helpful in regards to, you know, like, kind of like checking your work, you know, especially when you're putting in those initial pins. That, that's a tremendous, uh, definite help because I've used Face Tracker before, and that's the thing when a character's moving around a lot, it's hard to see frame by frame what, you know, the movement of those specific pins of the keyframes you set. Yeah, it's. I'd say it's pretty similar to actually uh, how it um, works with Tracker Node. So in Tracker Node you have a separate window for every tracker when you add tracker. Uh, for every tracker, uh, tracker you have a... Uh, where is tracker? Okay. <coughs> But I'm assuming it's basically taking the the points of the pins and sort of averaging where they are positionally and scale and sort of just keeping it localized to a center point. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So for, for tracker, you have a separate window here, and it's like stabilized. So when when you every time when you uh, create manual 2D tracks, then you always have to. Uh, look at this window and see that the image uh, rotates around the same point. So basically exactly the same you can do with uh, GeoTrack, but it works right in your... Uh, in, in, uh, when you... Yeah, like this, like you just select any point and, and that's it. And uh, the, the whole uh, viewport is rotating around this portion of the image. You can select several points and then it will be like in, around the middle of uh, how's it in the middle of the bounding box around this point. So, yeah, like this. And it's really important to have keyframes uh, in a such way that like they reflect the correct position of the um, object because we actually never change keyframes we nowadays we are working on some approach how to improve your keyframes but it's not yet released and uh, currently it's your responsibility as a user to set up keyframes correctly and uh, yeah it, one of the approaches uh, for consistency is this uh, small button here, which called the yeah, center view in GeoTracker. 
and uh, yeah, and uh, a stabilized viewer. Okay, and uh, another approach is actually another small button here, which is called magic keyframe. And let me also, and uh, let's then discuss what how it relates to consistency. So what it does, it automatically plays a model based on its uh, outline. For complex models, for example, like this violin, you can actually place the model roughly, like, like here, and then click this magic keyframe button and it will snap the model based on the outlines. And if you have quite a lot of outlines, it will work really great. And yes, actually it can be used for snapping objects through the timeline. Now, was this, was this snapping uh, yeah. technology, uh, was it first in Face Builder and then you now incorporated it into the... the no, it, or was it's it, actually vice versa. Oh, it's vice Face versa, Builder, okay. <laughs> it's appeared uh, a little bit later. And in uh, Face Builder, uh, we'll, I will show it a little bit later, because it, yeah, it also was introduced during the last two years. And uh, it basically works uh, using some neural network, which looks for uh, like special facial landmarks, which can be used for placing the uh, to placing our model. And uh, here's approach is different, and it's based mostly on outline and some like interesting points uh, from other keyframes. And uh, yeah, so it all looks like you need just to set up key, uh, keyframes in correct place. So the only thing that you need to choose is where to set up keyframe. And uh, all the rest will be done automatically. But everything not that good. <laughs> the problem is that, uh, well, first of all, it really works for such vivid objects with uh, pretty complex structure. For example, for like sometimes it fails. And if it fails, it fails completely. Like you will definitely notice it. But if it works, it works quite accurate. And like quite more accurate like than probably even you can do. Let's stick to agenda and uh, talk a little bit about uh, geometry with skeletons. So here's a robotic arm. And uh, let's say I want to track it and add some, uh, I don't know, like um, something to the end of this, uh, to the latest joint. But what is very important, if, for, of course, I can try to track this latest joint, yeah? But the problem is it's pretty small. Like, it's pretty small, it has not so many features, and the error gonna be quite big. Because, like, there's not a lot to track, and it's still moving, like, according uh, to... Uh, relating to the rest of the um, of this arm so it's quite hard to track it especially reliably in 3d space so let's track the object as a whole and uh, for this I have the model of this geometry here it is and uh, you probably noticed that I've um, read it through note 
which is not read geo but read rigged geo which is uh, pretty like similar to read geo but it can tr read not only uh, geometry itself but also some skeleton attached to it it works with uh, two formats which one of them is DAE another one is uh, FBX um, and um, yeah basically everything is very simple you just like load the model and now you have access to all the joints and uh, for instance like okay this joint should be rotated like this yeah oh gosh I hate this uh, oh, oh I can change it here like like this yeah so that's so bringing in, that's not just bringing in uh, like a rotational forward kinematics mesh. That's a mesh with actual vertices that are weighted. Uh, it's actually weighted, yeah, but not very um, they linearly weighted. So with n n with not not so sophisticated function for weighting, uh, but they weighted, yeah. So, okay, uh, so each vertice, like the vertices on the, 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 the final arm, are all weighted 100% to the rotation value of the final joint. Yeah. Okay, so but you can, you can do, like, deformations with different values weighted into each vertice for this specific world. world exactly, world. yeah. People use it, for example, for tracking arms and uh, palms and uh, knees and so on. So anything which has some deformation. Um, so, uh, let's control set everything and undo. So now, it's pretty interesting note, I'd say. Like, uh, rig, rig Geo gives ability to do quite a lot of things. Uh, I will show you a small demo, because I really don't want to repeat it. Uh, but yeah, let's see it. Oops, sorry. It was introduced quite a long time ago, but still not a lot of people knows about it, so it's better to show it. Yeah, it's sort uh, of one of the features that seems very elusive, uh, you know, on your site, I think, you know. Oh gosh, hit keynote. Um, yeah, so here I read a little bit different model with uh, much more number of bones. And uh, as I said, yeah, we can manipulate this uh, right inside new. To change the position and it's actually cool because sometimes for example um, let's say you have to play some like something very simple like for example car with uh, with several doors and uh, trunk and so on and uh, like you can create one model and give uh, it to your compers and uh, they will use it and like change all the joints they need it's much simpler than like ask every time somebody to uh, help with uh, animating some part of the geometry or like having like different geometries which are not connected to each other which hard to place so yeah you can first of all you can actually change for example if oh good example laptop if you track a laptop Nobody actually even changed the position of the uh, cover uh, to the body of the laptop. But you don't know the exact angle. So sometimes you actually need to uh, like find it, and it's like much simpler to find it right in comp. So what is also funny here, uh, 
Everson is keyframeable, so you can do a kind of a simple animation. So you can create keyframes, you can uh, animate them. And as far as I know, you're the only person that offers any form of plugin that allows for a deformation bone-based workflow in Nuke. Am I wrong on that? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Currently, there's no such ability. Uh, probably in Nuke 14, they solved it. We haven't yet checked. But ho hopefully they solved it. So then we can abandon this... Uh, tool set in like s several uh, versions of Nuke. Usually we support like s last several versions, like three or like, cause, but it all depends on the fixed platform, which is like underlying uh, software platform. Uh, uh, but yeah, actually, hopefully they have it because it's right time to hearing it. But uh, yeah. And what is also cool, you can actually uh, use any pre-baked animations. So you can load, for example, this was like just some animation from Mixama. And now at all in your keyframes, so you can somehow adjust it and so on. And uh, it's like, sounds funny. Like, nobody going to animate anything in Nuke, of course. And we are not crazy to actually uh, think that it is the primary usage. But what is funny, uh, people use it for this as well. For example, guys from uh, Framestore, when they were creating Jungle Book, uh, uh, they created lots of uh, bushes and trees and uh, created some pre-baked pre animation for them and then they controlled this animation right on comp and uh, actually as all these uh, trees and bushes were out of focus uh, and they like rendered the, them with VR, uh, V-Ray and uh, they are not like primary uh, thing in, uh, in a frame it's something like uh, for background but you can actually manipulate everything uh, right in comp, so you don't need to like have a big uh, feedback loop through all the departments, and you can fix everything uh, on a final stage. And uh, but of course, it, like needs some uh, scripting uh, skills from you if if you do something similar but it's possible <laughs> uh, for example you can adjust like a wind speed or something and so on so um, but we created this note not for this we created it for actually having it in GeoTrack so in GeoTrack now uh, let's see how it works where's my background okay um let's delete or or let's continue this tracking after this frame so there are seven keyframes and let's continue about so in geo tracker now uh let's for example try to set up keyframe here uh like let's toggle pins for example toggle this one so now they are inactive and these still are active this uh, in a in a bottom so now i can drag this pin here and it will like automatically change the all the rotations so do you have when you exported this uh, mesh and obviously bound skeleton with uh, weights assigned to the joint, uh, did you also limit the rotational 
Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> it actually can be adjusted right in GeoTracker. Oh, okay. In GeoTracker now, you have all these bones, and you can specify which are fixed and which are not. For example, here I fixed all the translations, and I've left one uh, degree of freedom for every joint. Uh, all, so, because actually it has just one degree of freedom, and uh, I've left it, so that's why this uh, arm works correctly. Gotcha. So you lock down the base translate rotate scale for the base, uh, the main joint, basically. The, the main joint is locked by these pins, just. Oh, okay, the pins are locking it. Actually, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, actually it can be locked. Uh, yeah, it, ah, yeah. Oh, there we go, gotcha. Also locked, okay. yeah. So, uh, and yeah, now it works like inverse kinematics. So you just drag pins to their position. Sometimes uh, it's not easy to do, but usually it's uh, quite simple. So like this. So like just several clicks, and I put my model exactly in the right place in... 3D. Mm. It's almost basically like a, a multiple geo geo tracker. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of multiple geo trackers, but with some uh, yeah, kind of limitations uh, because of joints. So now, now I can create refine, and oh gosh, I don't have a the good old pre-calc. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's recalculate it for this. Uh, That's what everyone always forgets to do. Okay, one, one more feature. Just switch off use analysis file. Oh, then you don't and have now, to. Yeah, you don't need it. <laughs> so, yeah, now you can uh, recalculate it without it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how helpful is that analysis? Well, with a uh, pre-calc file, it's much faster. Like, now we wait for, like, several seconds. With pre-calc, it's going to be, like, just, like, probably one second. So it was... Oh, where is the result? And uh, let's see the result. Yeah, but it... Yeah, we need to fix it. Are the, are the limitations helping the solve? Uh, in a way, or no? You know, you uh, know is uh, there, uh, the limitations of rotation, the limitations of the fact that the object is a static mesh that's not be, not like Face Builder where it's stretching and, you know. <coughs> well, of course it helps. Yeah, obviously. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, just like Face Builder, you're setting. Uh, sort of interim keyframes here and then you'll reinterpolate in a refinement refinement process. Uh yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you can if something goes wrong, you always ha have an ability to fix it oh gosh, wrong thing. Uh to fix it uh with like additional keyframe or something and it like this approach always work. Something goes wrong here. I don't know what exactly. Uh, this one looks okay. What's wrong? Hey, what's wrong with you? Why, why you can't? Okay, uh, but it's funny thing that let's probably try to show how to use it uh, in a little bit different way. Um, so in GeoTracker now, like, because I clearly can see that this uh, joint, this first joint, should be a little bit uh, rotated. And I actually can do it right in 3D. Hmm. 
So it's a combination of these uh, pins, but you could also go in there on a per joint basis and rotate and exactly, kind of line yeah. it up. So okay. you, or you can change it right in uh, results top here. Gotcha. You can change uh, everything. Are they? Are well. they? Uh, are those two interpolations fighting each other? Like, if you have too many pins, it's kind of like you're, you're like, oh, uh, I gotta re I delete a couple pins to get the rotation to allow to work. Or a good question, really. Uh, sometimes they are. Uh, funny thing, what was going wrong here? Because I mean, like, uh, probably it's a little bit wrong model in terms of like the. Because here everything is good, here is good, and something, something strange here. Oh, probably I've, I've broken it. I got it. I've broken the model when I played with it. Uh, from uh, yeah, let me check. Uh, seems I like a little bit rotated it when I played with it. Uh, in geo tracker oh, here let, let. yeah it's it looks broken so it's a uh, second one uh, let me check uh, location which one it is Uh, something like probably we'll lose time if I will. Yeah, it's definitely broken for some reason. Uh, so it's better to reset it. Uh, it shouldn't shouldn't look like this. Yeah, no. Are those, no, are those like uh, individual vertices points that are messed up? Is that what I'm looking at? I'm Sorry? It looks like there's vertices that are in the wrong place, or is that is that me? Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's something. The, the core model is a little bit like, I don't know what was going on with it, but it, the core model looks a little bit off. Uh, I don't know, brother. Uh, why so? Yeah, hopefully now it's better. And uh, uh, let's try to set up a keyframe once again. Um, yeah, now it's much, much better. And uh, this pin, this one. Kind of this. But generally, I think you and our viewers got the idea. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Pretty, pretty simple. And uh, <coughs> like this, and like this. Yeah, so now we can refine it one more time. And, like, take a look there. And yeah, it's, it still works without analysis file. It's pretty fast, I'd say. Have you heard so of any? Uh, I, I know the NDAs kind of limit you, but have you heard of any recent movies lately where people are like, "Oh yeah, we use this in the movie, but we can't show you any footage because, uh, you know, because of NDAs." But have you heard of any like major studios that are sort of using this in a way that you're like, "Oh wow," and that's a big production. Uh, well, uh, it's hard to say. Well, we don't know about exact movies because, unfortunately, we like we solving tools, and usually people who do tools uh, never know how they used. Like, if 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 you sell uh, hammers, like you don't know all the buildings they they were used to uh, build, but. Um, at the same time, uh, like all major studios, seems to continue using our tools, and uh, 
and more and more and in, in a bigger scale. Yeah, so, it just seems like it's such a great application to use. You know, can you imagine trying to do this hand key free anim hand key animation in Maya to match an actual live action element like a robotic arm? You'd be like, you know, pulling your hair out. You know, several big studios uh, who like. Do you remember there was a big boom of 3D uh, films, like stereo, stereo mm, yeah, film. stereoscopic workflows for like probably what 2D conversion, 3D to yeah. yeah. And actually, when you convert 2D to 3D, mm -hmm. usually it's like because uh, people people used it to tracking even full bodies. And uh, of course, faces and so on to convert from 2D to 3D, and that was one of the like very surprising for me applications of rigs. Cause yeah, I, and you're basically I, you're you're in a way you're creating a depth pass using this information. Yeah, yeah of course you can like create depth pass afterwards, like. So, yeah, it's kind of line or anything like it's. But you, uh, in this circumstance, you know, if you're bringing interactive lighting into this, into this, or adding decals, or you know, or whatever. It, I mean, you know, there's so many different applications you can do with this. You know, yeah. this is a complex thing. It's a, it's a robotic arm. It's not just sticking a yeah. sticker on somebody, you know, or putting a tattoo on their face. You know. The cool thing, there is also a new. Uh, way of export. So now you can export any particular bone. Uh, so, for example, here I can export this bone, which in at the very end. And now I have a transform geo, which is uh, which is what? What's wrong with you? Transform geo. I don't like it. It looks like a bug. Uh, let me check it out. It should work, but it doesn't. Uh, so that's transform information being exported. Uh, cool. We found a bug. And it's going to be fixed in the nearest future. <laughs> yeah. It seems uh, the export thing is broken. Uh, probably it's because of Nuke 14. I don't know. Let's just simple transform. A yeah, simple transform geo works. Like bone transform geo doesn't work for some reason. I don't know why. But we'll try to figure, figure it out. Hey, great. Love this. Um, yeah, but in theory, <laughs> it should work. <laughs> as a transform geo which is bound to the latest joint so you can add anything uh, to it and um, let's continue then so probably probably that's it about geo tracker uh, the only thing that probably could be interesting for you is that it's now available in after effects and more or less in the same functionality. So basically, everything works uh, almost like in Nuke. How long has After Effects? How long has GeoTracker been available for After Effects? Uh, we released it uh, in the end of the December, so it's just. Uh, That's a relatively new update. Okay. For yeah. Me, for just, you After Effects people out there, I know. I know there's there are some, even though this is a pri primarily Nuke channel, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but we re also released lots of uh, quite uh, detailed tutorials for this. So you can uh, check them uh, on our YouTube channel. Hopefully the link going to be placed under this video. And uh, yeah, all, all more or less with the same functionality. But what is really great, you can integrate it with Cinema 4D, you can integrate it with uh, um, uh, some particle emitters right in our graphics or 3D element and so on. So quite a lot of applications. And what is really make me crazy is that 
right after we re released it, we've noticed that After Effects is going to have a through, uh, real 3D space in the next update with uh, 3D objects and so on. And uh, which basically a really good combination uh, with uh, Tracker. So actually, Tracker should be a complementary uh, tool for working with uh, 3D objects. Yeah. Better late than never, huh, After Effects? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, probably we can have a small pause here, and uh, then let's switch to the rest of the agenda. Because, uh, like, yeah, just probably several, se several, um, several minutes, probably like five, because we are already like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean this. That's what's the beauty of this uh, specific tool time in Nuke is to 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 settle down and geek out a little bit. And if we go over, that's fine. You know, um, usually yeah, so people like just want that. You know, like ah, 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 get it out the window. But some of this stuff is literally even some of the the, the go arounds and stuff that you're showing are common workflows for people to see and say, hey, okay, I know when I bump into that problem, I'll do this. You know. You know. Well, let's continue with the agenda. And now I want to show you something like, which is really helpful, especially for big studios, but also for smaller productions as well. And it's called blend shapes. Actually, it's not something innovative. It's just blend shapes in right in Nuke. And uh, this time I'll also start with a uh, video. So let's take a look. Hi, we're happy to introduce the new Blend Shapes pipeline in Nuke. Blend Shapes provides a way to morph one geometry to another as long as they have the same topology. You can also mix two or more animated geometries into one. So here are our three new nodes that can improve your workflow bringing Blend Shapes to Nuke. Join Blend Shapes, Mix Blend Shapes and Fax. Let's see how they work. For example, we have a fox head with a neutral expression, and here's the same head with a smile. To create a model with blend shapes, we add a join blend shapes node and connect the neutral head to the base input and the smiling head to the first extra input. Let's name it smile, and now we're ready to mix and animate them. To mix them, we simply add a mixed blend shapes node and connect it to the output of the join blend shapes node. Now we can mix the two heads using the slider in the properties pane on the right. Let's add more heads with different expressions. Connect them to join blend shapes node, name and mix all of them. To create animation, we can add keys to sliders in the mix blend shapes node. You can connect animated geometry to the inputs of join blend shapes nodes. For example, here we have a simple plane and two animated sequences of low and high frequency waves on planes with the same topology. To mix them, we connect the still plane to the base input and the animated ones to extra inputs. Then we create a mixed blend shapes node and here we can adjust sliders to get mixed animation. We can track a model with blend shapes. Let's join the fox head with the smile blend shape, track it with geo tracker, project with UV texture, apply the texture and then adjust expressions of the fox face by adding a mixed blend shapes node and animating the smile slider. To work like that with human faces, we don't even need to create blend shapes manually. Instead, we can use the fax node connected directly to face builder or face tracker nodes. And then in the mixed blend shapes node, we can see many sliders reflecting all ARKit compatible fax blend shapes. You can also export tracked face tracker animation as animated fax blend shapes. Then you can apply this animation to another head, even with different topology, but the same blend shapes. That's it. Download our new package for Nuke. That's it. <laughs> Have you seen it before? Uh, what's that? Sorry. Have you seen it before? H have I seen that before? yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah i have and um 
You know, I was just kind of, I'm, I'm, whenever I introduce tools and so forth, or at least authors of tools and they start selling tools, I always, in the back of my mind, is always that question, like, what is the need or the commonality of this tool being used in the in, a, in, a, in an industry workflow environment? So I usually will ask that to the author, like, where, where do you see this most beneficial with blend shapes so, and so forth? And it's a, it's a good question. Like, uh, do you have the answer? Like, I wonder, like, what what applications do you see? Like, for instance, I don't know, like Maya, you know. Um, I mean, there's many different applications that you can use this for. You know, most people, I always play devil's advocate and put in my mind, like, well, obviously, face tracker would be a great way to track a, a, a rotation translation position. Then you would bring this in to a Maya scene and then do the blend shapes and render through a render engine inside of Maya for a better render engine versus what you have inside of Nuke. You know, because the, the render engines inside of Nuke, I think there is ray tracing and all that, but the render quality, you know, for whatever reason, maybe hair on the, like, you're like, well, I want to throw dynamic hair on the, on the fox, you know, obviously. But I mean, th there's also elements within compositing, especially, and I, I work in television compositing, where it's like quick and dirty, do something where it involves a blend shape, and that's where it comes in handy, where it's not this big production level. You know, it, it's a, more of a background thing, like you mentioned before, you know. Well, what is, like, I, I actually uh, see quite a lot of applications to it. That's why we released it. So, uh, one, which is more or less obvious is just to track something. Uh, for example, like, it's, I call it puppet animation or something like this. So you track something rigid and then you make it like more, more live. So you can change it. For example, if you like track a doll, you can then add some expressions uh, on top of it and so on. Uh, for instance, um, have you seen that Deadpool film? Like actually several of them, <laughs> and uh, as far as I know, they did exact exactly the same, and also right in new, because uh, Beta internally have a kind of a similar uh, uh, similar stuff. So uh, how they like they film the actor without any expressions, like only in mask. And then they added these expressions uh, on on comp uh, because, like, they just projected it and added some some basic expressions, like to to make it like not just a, a static face, um, which is actually a quite a common case. What else? Also, changing the objects that, like, for example, making people a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, uh, and changing and tweaking uh, animation a little bit, for example, uh, adding a little bit smile, uh, or, for example, like, uh, vice versa, like, uh, make people more serious and sad, or, for example, making eyes a little bit bigger, or... And, and so on and so on. Quite a lot of different like approaches. Or you can do like a complete uh, like morph uh, thing. Like for example, uh, how how this film was called uh, from the, uh, ah I forgot it. from from uh, Dark Nost in Sunshine. I forgot. And like the the thing is that there was a transformation from uh, the actor to vampire, uh, and uh, and yeah, you can do it. Like you can uh, un uh, track the face, then uh, you can like track the position of the face, but then you can like change the model uh, and change the texture simultaneously. So. You change the model, you change the texture, so you actually transform the actor. And it also can be done in Nuke, and uh, with quite a good result. 
of course, as you said, if you need like proper rendering, uh, definitely in Maya it's easier to do, like or some other proper three D program. Uh, but uh, sometimes in Nuke it really has the like. Uh, you, as far as I know, like usually when you have transformation, you have this transformation, and then and then close up or something like this. So you 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 show you show the effect, and then you show the uh, better quality rendering. <laughs> so it's always like this. So and uh, yeah, basically that's it. And uh, we actually had a long. Um, tutorial like not strong but also live stream about uh, blend shapes and uh, yeah it, like se several hours and you like know how to use them <laughs> uh, actually just one hour and uh, about fox blend shapes for faces I will say a little bit in the end of this uh, stream today let's switch to face builder which actually got the like most of the improvements probably the last year and uh, I will show you it's in action this time and uh, let me open composition and uh, sorry um, I can tell you as a user of Face Builder a lot successfully. Um, my greatest challenge, if I were to sort of like be, so the Q and A is like is um, building out that neck area. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it always seems to be the most difficult thing to kind of just get right. You know what I mean? When you're building the initial mesh, you know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Go. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like neck area is uh, definitely one of the most challenging things because there is no lots of interesting points on neck. Because if, uh, for example, here let's take this example, uh, you have like something pretty notable uh, around eyes, around nose, mouth. Mm -hmm. you, you sort of have landmarks you can constantly refer to. Yeah. yeah. Not really a lot on uh, cheeks. Yeah, and cheeks are tricky. Elbow. I mean, I used to be a character artist for NetherRealm Studios, and that was always the hardest thing to, ref to to build from the reference was the actual cheeks themselves. You know. Yeah, and um, with neck, everything is much worse. Like there's nothing, nothing interesting at all. No, no landmark which you can use for. Uh, as a reference for face builder, and uh, we have some ideas how to uh, approach it in future, but currently, yeah, it's a little bit tricky, especially for tracking. Uh, for face builder, it's a little bit easier, but uh, yeah, let let's try it. Let's try it in action. So, uh, first thing that you usually have to do is do some undistorted. So uh, here I have some uh, grid and uh, length proportion analysis of it. So in most cases it doesn't really dramatically change the image, especially the object in the middle. But uh, yeah, in this case, it's actually changed something on a border, but all the central part is more or less the same. Just really, really small minor changes. So probably, I mean, that's why I, it will even uh, deactivate this node just for the sake of performance, because I'm currently on the laptop. So. And yeah, let's uh, create a face builder. Face builder classic. And connect it 
Um, in Face Builder, I will uh, use it as background and camera. So, in that particular case, most likely I know the camera, and uh, here it is. Uh, I will, we can use it. It's actually 50 millimeters, but uh, yeah, let's use it because we've already discussed focal length estimation, but in Phase Builder it could be estimated as well, uh, which is great, because usually, for example, in shots, you don't know, if you don't have this reference photos, you need to, like, work only with your footage, and uh, in that case, often you don't know camera. So, and basically that's it, let's start. And uh, let's first take a look at uh, the photos. I will remind our uh, viewers that Face Builder is a tool for creating a really accurate model of the face based on uh, several photos. Usually, like you need just like, at least several angles of view to get a high accuracy. Like five, usually is enough, more or less. Here. I I have a little bit more, but also like you can of course have even one image for it. Like it's uh, it will also work. So usually I start with uh, three quarters because it like gives you a better understanding of the geometry of the face. Like it, something about depths and uh, at the same uh, like it's combination of profile view and uh, front view. So, uh, let's uh, create a first keyframe. I can click Center Geo, and as in Geo Tracker, I can just uh, drag, drag. What's going on? And it's preferable to film these actors at a 50 millimeter, which has the least amount of barrel lens distortion, if not remove the barrel lens distortion. Because can barrel lens distortion, I should say, if somebody shot with wide-angle lenses on an actor, not knowing there was barrel lens distortion, would that greatly affect the final model or not? Well, uh, if you distort your footage, it more or less uh, uh, doesn't really matter. But uh, if you can't understand, uh, of course, like less distortion you have, the better the result you get. So, more or less like this. Uh, well, I have something strange here, but I actually had it before. Uh, ah, okay, because face builder is not selected here. No? What's going on? Oh, yeah. It's funny that it's very long. Uh, uh, I mean, like, performance is very bad. I don't know why. I will delete everything else probably because of it and also I have not really good uh, laptop yeah it was because of the rest of the script um, so your general, general workflow is uh, tip of the nose tip top of the ear and then the chin as the first initial points no no not always. no actually my general workflow is the following I like remove all pins I even don't click the center geo, I just click align face. I click align face and I automatically place the model uh, in a correct place. Uh, See, my issue is when I do that, you've initially put down what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, seven, seven like basically about 12 pins, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the thing is moving those pins maybe i'm doing maybe I, I'm, I'm ill experienced in your in your tool set but it seems like the less pins the better for the initial setup or is there one is there maybe you're showing me where you uh is maybe that's what toggle pins is well it kind of turns off the pin when you adjust to the next uh view i didn't point. get what's the issue uh, you thought. well the the initial the issue was that s when i do the align face uh, when I go to the next angle, I have to move all those points 
but it's almost no. like it want, the, the, it, some it, points are lingering behind because you're you're trying to adjust so many points. So actually many. not, actually not, because actually uh, face builder have like individual set of points on every frame. So for, for example, here we have like uh, twelve points. Here, if I click uh, click center geo, there is no points at all, so you can like add one by one. So there is no issue like this. Uh, I, I will adjust it a little bit just uh, to get the more or less it pretty accurate, but there are of course some issues. For example, here or uh, here. I'll, I'll just shut up and let you demonstrate because obviously you've got a better technique than me. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So there are quite a lot, but uh, for now, first, usually, I place several angles to get that, because now if uh, we look at the model in 3D, it a little bit changed to the uh, original model, and it's definitely not because of Face Builder, I hope. Uh, oh god. Scene also should be a classic. Oh yeah. Hey. This 3D versus 3D classic seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. So if you look at it, you may notice that they are already a little bit different, but not really a lot. I Just guess. like small issues. What so I, it, I was going to ask, <clears throat> the default character. Uh, almost looks very young. Have you ever thought about in the future incorporating uh, like uh, presets of like double chin or super fat people, you know, or, you know, almost like... Well, if this default character, uh, fr frankly speaking, it's like, it's not just default, it's actually average. Because we had a quite a big um, database of different... Um, uh, people, how they look like, and actually it's something average between young and uh, old uh, women and uh, men and so on, uh, fat and thin, uh, thick. So, so somebody averaged everybody's face and then they got this thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty so we all kind of yeah. look like this, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so aliens think about us like this. <laughs> Uh, let's continue with Face Builder, and uh, let's use several like more angles of view. Uh, we've done with one angle. Let's align face on others. Uh, okay, so let's continue, and uh, yeah, all good here. We do some small changes. Probably we're going neck, but neck, like for now, let's don't touch neck. Also, let's go here and also align face. Here, more changes needed, like because like some new information. And uh, like this, like this. This align face uh, thing is very, like this time I've uh, changed neck a little bit. And if you see like on all other uh, views, it also changes. That's like a cool thing about face building because like now we solve everything simultaneously. And, uh, so you, you have to be very gingerly around the neck in a procedural way because it's such a huge extrapolation of interpolation down to the shoulders basically. Yeah, kind of. So, double uh, chin here. Okay. Let's go to the profile view. Also, line face. And, uh, yeah, quite a lot of fixes needed here. Uh, so, have you, like, you know, I'm just kind of thinking, like, uh, have, you had, have you ever had any issue where this default face... Uh, could not match up to somebody that's like morbidly obese or something, or 
well, extremely it, emaciated. It, it's uh, pretty uh, hard to find a face uh, with uh, from like from behind. Usually, neural networks works really bad in that case. Uh, oh, let let's let's do it accurately here because uh, we have a. I can definitely tell you got more years of experience. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been to a lot. <laughs> the okay, let's let's probably add several more views, and uh, we'll try to uh, improve the quality. So. First, on, on like on a first pass, I usually do some like rough uh, placing. More or less, is like don't I don't try to fit all the details. We'll do it on like on 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 uh, next pass. Uh, but like first pass is not for this. Uh, it's just to get the more or less accurate uh, model and uh, yeah we'll, we'll continue with it like a little bit later and uh, let's not use all the images for now so more or less it's enough um, so now if I switch to 3d you see it's like significantly different face so usually, even on one angle of view, it will look okay, okay. -ish. Then, uh, actually, it's one view usually not enough to get the like really accurate face. Um, it's still pretty like smooth. I don't have lots of uh, small details. It, like it can be improved, uh, but it's now like really further from the average one, yeah? Now let's c proceed with the details. And uh, yeah, it's like something that we introduced recently. And uh, it's pretty flexible model, but it still knows quite a lot of, about uh, how human face can look like. So we just Dragging points, uh, no special knowledge actually needed. It's funny that sometimes, like, because this uh, library, which is underneath of this development, we call it core library, uh, we license it separately. So some companies uh, buy the uh, underlying engine to their own needs. For example, for uh, making um, uh, stuff for AI when you have you, when you need some uh, like um, landmarks and uh, markup and so on and uh, to get it uh, this tool is really great and what is also cool that uh, you don't really need like there is no the learning curve is very steep, so you can easily uh, learn quite unexperienced in 3D men or women or, uh, to learn the tool. And uh, it, because it's pretty easy to use. Um, but yeah, in some cases, there are some like aspects that should be specifically explained like for example the overall workflow okay okay please. those 45 degree angles really help in defining the cheeks huh? exactly yeah also bottom and uh, top views really helpful uh, for cheeks because like you get the actual uh, form of chick using these views uh, okay 
something like this. That sound yeah, I was thinking like if you ever had to do like, you know, I don't know if you've seen that new movie out called The Whale with Brendan Fraser where he's like this massively fat guy and he has like no neck. <laughs> like, imagine like trying to do that for, I mean, I, what are the odds of you having to do that though, you know, but I mean, I'm just saying like, um, uh, I'm always throwing out ideas. I'm like, all right, well. I haven't seen it. Is it something fresh? Yeah. It's like a little bit of a nip tuck there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's tricky, but yeah, you see it now. It's like possible to do even such form of nose, which is pretty far from the average one. So let's do it. Let's do it here. Let's do it here a little bit. Yeah, and now the form of the back of the head. Yeah, that's always the fun part of the neck. I mean, if you don't have enough images for the profile and the back, then you're really, you know. Uh, I know, I mean, so I still, I've still gotten really good results. You know. This part is really tricky. And, uh, yep. It's important to say that it's iterative process. Like, I mean, like, uh, all the images are solving together, all the views. So if something good on one view, it doesn't mean that it's okay on, on another view. So sometimes, for example, you uh, think that you made all the uh, fixes on one view, but then go to the other view and, like, do these fixes again. But usually, it more or less straightforward process. So something like this. Let's see what's going on here. I, I remember using Face Tracker, Face Builder. Uh, interesting enough, for something that you would think could be taken care of with a simple clone operation, but I had tried different options and I couldn't do it. And it was a it was a scene in the show Cobra Kai, which on, it was on Netflix. And there was a uh, female actress, uh, and they were, there was some kind of like lens flare on her chin. And no matter how hard we cloned it, it tried to clone it out, it didn't work, you know. And we had to resort, to, we resorted, we resorted to uh, face builder, and it, it took care of it. So, yeah, it was, it was rather interesting. Usually you can take care of that with a clone operation, you know, uh, or some kind of like, you know, tracking position but for some reason you know that was the only solution was face tracker face builder oh I wish I had it and show it as well <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like mm -hmm. the unsung hero people don't you know like you were saying a lot because of NDAs your this tools used immensely for a lot of productions, but you don't know, you don't hear about it that often. <laughs> you know, nobody's sort of like yeah. showcasing it in there. Like this was using, you know. I mean, you could kind of tell sometimes if they, if the studio does its own personal reel. You know, you're like, oh, that's obviously Face Builder, Face Tracker. You know, if they show the 3D mesh in action or something. You know? The thing is that uh, actually, especially for faces, because faces is something like, for example, is some famous actor. And, and there's some cleanup or making him more uh, in a good form and so and usually it's like covered with extra and day on top of it's just extra thing day <laughs> so. I, I feel like such a lazy artist when i'm seeing you refine this because to be quite honest there are times where you can just have two images and Sometimes you only have the plate because you don't have the uh, the actors in these different positions, yeah, and it still exactly. works out with just a couple sometimes, of. Sometimes you angles. just take several frames from plate, and that's it. But I want to show. For now, it's like in ideal case, like when you have some references, which is very easy to take because it's like just several photos on uh, um, the, on a filming. Uh, stage and uh, yeah I think I'm done with it like more or less I'm happy with the result like it seems pretty accurate 
And if I have switched now to 3D, you see now it's like much, much closer to Alexander. If I show it to uh, my to, to people who knows him, definitely they will um, able to guess who it is. But of course, to like simplify it, we can generate a texture. <laughs> so let's uh, create a texture builder and connect it to the camera and connect it to the camera and to background which is here and geometry and uh, geometry actually in face builder we need to export facial expressions uh, it's actually the transformation and actually there's no expressions because we didn't allow it, uh, it but uh, if there were expressions uh, on on the face uh, it will uh, work with them as well and here I like in texture builder I put several frames uh, which to create an in texture and uh, yeah, let's take a look how it all works. Here we are. So now we get pretty accurate texture of it. And uh, we can also create a apply material and apply it on top of the plate. And here we are. Now, not to jump ahead, but how did you work it so that this stuff gets ported over uh, pretty, you know, non-destructively into the metahumans via Epic? Did you work with them, or did you so that the the, the, yeah, the actually the the next thing that I will uh, show and uh, yeah, we'll discuss it as well. Uh, first, I want to show like a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead. What's going on uh, with our texture? My mark. Okay. So. Um, Everybody's got Slack. <laughs> oh yeah. I can switch it off. Um, I'm actually uh, I got I got done with my visual effects shots for the week so. Thankfully, no one's slacking, but you might hear the, the tick, tick, tick on my end, too. So I'm <laughs> waiting for that to pop up. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, yeah, all good with texture, except this part near the neck. And uh, because, like, it seems that neck was off on probably one of or two views, and that's why we have a kind of a combination of uh, different textures together, which is weird. But more or less, it's like not that hard to find this view and fix it as well. So, but on uh, face, everything looks pretty cool, I'd say. Obviously, you um, do take this into Photoshop for refining if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. And um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about Texture Builder because it's pretty interesting to itself. So what is Texture Builder? It's actually doesn't like coupled with Face Builder. It works with any geometry and uh, any camera and any background. So if you have background, if you have some object uh, sh and you like align this object somehow through some camera, then you actually can project yeah, and grab the texture. But the cool thing, and actually it works Usually with project 3D node, it does basically the same. You just grab the texture from the image, right? But from the plate. But the thing is that there are several limitations. First of all, with project uh, 3D, you then you like, like let's do it. So let we have project 3D, and uh, we connect it to camera and uh, oh gosh what a mess I have here 
So let's let's do it separately. And let's delete this part. So we don't need it. So am I to assume it's a it's a it's a masking operation from one picture to the next by omitting the projection of parallel versus perpendicular to camera texture? Absolutely okay. right. It's you, you you guessed it absolutely correctly. So you actually yeah, if you have project 3D uh, like like this, uh, you get just one. Uh, Line material and uh, scan line render, which is oh gosh, the wrong scan line render. <laughs> you get like two scan of line. everything now. It's like uh, render scan line. Re it, I, I wish there is some global uh, reset or something. If you still want to have a classic notes, then yeah, just set exactly. It. And uh, other just don't uh, appear. I think they the, just updated Nuke to Nuke 14.2. Am I wrong on that or no? Or 14.0? Yeah, the update was recently, like yesterday, probably. Yeah, or I thought I saw an update. Yeah. So front, yeah. So here's a portion from uh, Project 3D, and here's a result of Texture Builder, right? So. We have some portion, but we have this portion on every view. And of course, on, on every view, we have like a good part of the texture and a like more stretch, st stretch part, for example, like here. And uh, what Texture Builder does is actually merging all the uh, projections together. And as you said, based on the angle to the object. So if it's perpendicular, then it's like most likely a good part of the texture. If it's stretched, then let's give it less weight <coughs> and merge it with. Which saves you the headache of trying to do it yourself in some sort of 3D projection. So, and uh, the, the thing I want to mention about Texture Builder is that it can be used for cleanup. Because uh, actually here, you can like s specify which frames you need and uh, you can specify it like this or you can specify it for example uh, the extra builder like you can specify it like this there's actually uh, some uh, yeah you can actually ah oh, you can actually yeah you can actually specify it like relative or not relative to the current frame so, for example, when I said one, two, three, it's just absolute values. But you can actually also specify it like zero and relative to the current frame. And it will always take the current frame. So the result is going to be the same as uh, this workflow, like Project 3D Apply Materials can then render. But uh, the cool thing that usually you have, uh, let's it is. Yeah, is it the same? Come on. Oh no. Wrong, wrong geometry. Yeah, it's more or less the same. I can hear the uh, fan on your computer. <laughs> sorry? I think that's the fan on your computer. I'm hearing like a buzzing. A zzz. I don't know if that's your computer. Yeah. Yeah. It works. <laughs> so yeah, now it's uh, now it's the same. Like, ex uh, except I've cut it several, like, uh, things, but it also can be uh, adjusted. For example, uh, like, stretching suppression could be zero, and then it's, like, lots of stretching. Or you can expand some edges and do some in painting, uh, and so on. But what is also cool, you can actually write something like minus one, zero, one. And... Uh, in that case, it will actually use uh, several frames together, like current frame, the frame before, and frame after. Uh, and uh, which is really helpful in case when you track the object with GeoTracker, then you can use this feature to actually get some texture but not only from the current frame, but also from the others, and get some, for example, texture 
from uh, the parts that you do not currently see. Or, for example, combine several, like, for example, you have some uh, o- obstacle, like occlusion, in front of the object, and you want to clean it up. Then you can actually combine several textures together uh, by adding just uh, mask uh, in th- you know, alpha mask, then you combine and render them back, and voila, clean up is done. Cool. Yeah, the occlusion always throws you off on cleanups. Yeah, so Texture Builder is very, like, uh, cool node on its own. It's not only for Face Builder, which is also not, like, obvious. (laughs) Hmm. I'll have to give it a try sometime. (laughs) Yeah, every time when I use it uh, for such case, I, like, God bless uh, that we uh, created it in, like, a general way. Um, well, and um, let's switch now to the demonstration. For, and uh, I want to show several things. First of all, like uh, one small improvement. Uh, it's going to be in, in the end of this demo. Uh, it's basically some stuff that we. Uh, like for example tracking of the face uh, of, of the neck and adding like more longer neck which is really needed especially in case when you have for example uh, yeah, the lighting but also for aging de-aging and so on because neck actually gives like quite a lot to to, to the expression and uh, without neck it's impossible to use oh it's about another an, another feature but uh, let me show like the most interesting thing here oh it's not here Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, I'll show you. Uh, yeah, in the end. Yeah, I've forgotten which demo it is. Um, so, yeah, it's just only about neck and better model. Uh, but the last thing that you actually already mentioned is about metahumans. So, sometimes you want to make a kind of a digital double, uh, and metahuman is a good way to do it. And because uh, you can actually have a full ready for animation character in Unreal or in uh, actually Maya, because they have an expert to Maya as well. So let's first see it in action, and then I will like say several words about it. That's basically this model that we just tried. It's one of our developers, and he has very uh, skin face and quite tall. And like, yeah, this was an old model and a new one, which is much more accurate. And now it's like really simple to use it this one face and then how it works actually there is a tool which called uh, mesh to metahuman and it's tool that was released by uh, unreal engine last april and you actually can bring any mesh to metahuman uh, with the help of it okay so you you, this was something that uh, that uh they themselves developed, and then you're just using it to port over your mesh. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it's uh, so you can, for instance, take just some uh, photogrammetry and like then use it with this tool. But the thing is that you need some markup, uh, and now you have to do it manually. We are actually thinking about how to do it like automatically. But here we need some like cooperation with uh, 
uh, MetaHuman uh, team, and we are in, like working on it. Um, so this is a slight uh, uh, extra process that happens when you bring your mesh in to port it into the MetaHumans. You have to go through this little spline workflow that I'm looking at right now? Yeah, okay. so it's more or less automatic, but sometimes you have to fix it. Like, for example, uh, these features <coughs> more or less uh, like placed automatically. But for some uh, side views, there are some additional uh, work that have should be done. And, uh, and yeah, and then you just like can uh, click uh, one button and it will automatically that's pretty so, amazing. Uh, it in their model, and uh, yeah, and now you can use it in MetaHuman Creator, and adjust all the features like lips, eyes, uh, hair, and so on. Unfortunately, in this process, they change model a little bit. It's not the same as it was in, uh, on input. Uh, but they con constantly improving this algorithm as well. And uh, like when we last try, uh, time tried it, uh, it was not that like when it was in the beginning and hopefully now it even better as well. And uh, what also not really good is that there's not so many uh, like Customizable eyes, uh, teeth, mm, eyebrows, lashes, and uh, hair, and so on, um, which actually like. So it's not often easier to find the right accessory stuff for for, for your particular head and for your actor. Uh, but they also improving it, like they adding more and more. Uh, so. so, what we also have done, we created a MetaHuman compatible texture in uh, in the tool. It called because uh, we can change uh, textures on the fly. And we can, and not also textures, but also like uh, topology, like high and low poly. So we can use this oh, one. Oh, so MH is metahuman, huh? Okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> MH is metahuman. And that's and their default uh, UV layout that is the most robust to translate into the metahuman process. Yeah, it's exactly the same layout like in uh, metahuman. And what it actually means, so let's switch to a good texture builder, uh, that you can actually grab the texture and then combine it with uh, the pretty general uh, texture that generates metahuman. So if I switch back to the presentation, and uh, I guess... Uh, yeah, so if, uh, but by the way, you see it's done in Blender, so we have in Blender exactly the same functionality like in Nuke, but in contrast to Nuke, Blender is a little bit cheaper, it's just free. Uh, Nuke is also, uh, by the way, nowadays not that expensive because there is an indie version, and indie version works with several notable plugins on the market. And kin tools are among these plugins, so uh, which are few yeah. and far between nowadays. <laughs> Sorry, I said uh, there's 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 not many tools that uh, obviously you know uh, developers you know make sure they develop correctly for the the limitations of Nuke Indie. But I was saying like a lot of tools that are Actually, on the Nukepedia pages are. It, it, you know yeah this uh, this uh, limitations are actually relaxed specifically by the founder yeah, for several plugins and uh, we uh, like one of one of them 
And uh, yeah, so uh, but in Blender, everything is free. And uh, actually, the general user experience uh, for Face Builder is even like better because it gives more flexibility in terms of uh, UI and UX. And uh, there are even so several additional features, but like really small. Um, for example, reading exif from files, like we can automatically read exif and understand the camera parameters from uh, the input files. Of course, you can do it uh, in Nuke, but with lots of additional manual work. Um, so yeah, here we take metahuman texture and uh, export it. And then we combine it with the one which was uh, created like on this tab. And uh, we do it by like some like mask. And actually, uh, it's not that hard uh, to transfer this high frequency details like spots and uh, mustache like uh, and sun to the uh, from one texture to another. We've also explained it in lot in all the details in the uh, educational stream on our YouTube channel. So, and yeah, basically that's it. We've done it, and then we can apply this texture back, uh, sec just substituting some file, and voila, actually it's... You're now in the matrix. Just, <laughs> lab. Uh, Here you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a really fun and uh, easy way to bring yourself to Metaverse, but also it's a good uh, way to prepare uh, quite detailed models for digital doubles in production. Uh, what else could be done, like as you've seen, uh, actually, there is uh, a way to. Oh gosh, sorry. To actually add some animations in, uh, for metahumans, because they have this uh, tool which is called Live Link Face, and it's application for iOS device, and it, you can grab some expressions, uh, and it will be. Uh, transferred to uh, the metahuman and we also have this feature like in face builder uh, you can create uh, faxes which actually a basis for this uh, rkit uh, application for ios and you can uh, in uh, in in blender you can even like import the file with this, uh, uh, which is exported by lifelink face, and upload all these transformations uh, grabbed from, 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 uh, from the mobile device. And let's take a look at it. It's actually First part is mostly about uh, face builder itself, uh, but yeah, like in the very end, like it's also about new topology, new um, UV layers and new uh, polygons. But yeah, let's let's take a look at the very end. So we have like box, uh, fax uh, stuff which is bundled with the model so you can animate it and uh, yeah, using lifelink face up as well. And what is really cool about it is that actually uh, this lifelink face animations could be applied to any uh, to to any model, uh, in some like like for example here, 
in face tracker we can actually also ex export this fax uh, animations so we for example can track a human then export fax and apply it to the model that has the same uh, fax expressions and voila now like you can animate uh, any model with this set of blend shapes, which is more or less standard de facto nowadays for facial uh, blend shapes. Speaking about fox, it's definitely not the best way to animate uh, face. Because, uh, for example, face tracker internally has much more sophisticated model. The cool thing about fox is that it's a standard way to animate face. Like, it's a way to transfer animation from one human uh, being, for example, to another, or from one human being to some creature, and so on. There are new approaches to it. For example, in the last Avatar movie, uh, they created a, like one more approach to it. But they all in-house approaches. And what is great, uh, what is great about Fox is that Currently, uh, they are also standard uh, basis for animation in ARKit, which is a technology in uh, Apple devices. And, for example, all these Animojis and so on and so on, it's all based on Fox as well. So, if you're asking what is fascinating about Fox, it's just because it's a standard. Um, it's not the best quality, but to get the best quality, you do you have to do something custom. And um, yeah, so more or less, it's all that we have released uh, since last time uh, King Tools was presented on your show. And hopefully. This well, oh gosh, two, two. I'm at. I'm looking at two hours and fifteen minutes. So we got a whole feature-length film here. So. <laughs> yeah. Sorry that was long. I've really tried to make it faster because the, I really made uh, uh, prepared uh, videos for this, <laughs> and uh, but hopefully it was useful and interesting. Yes, thank you so much. And and before we uh, before you take off, sir. And again, thank you for the presentation and uh, for kind of putting us through this uh, to kind of getting an idea of. Um, I just wanted to go over the question, and we just had one from Madlook VFX. How do you see the VFX industry evolving in the future, and how do you envision Keen Tools fitting into that landscape? Well, to be honest, I'm not really good in predicting the future. Uh, but uh, definitely new tools will appear. Like for nowadays, we see a huge rise of uh, AI approaches like neural networks and so on. And we'll, they will definitely change uh, the tool sets that we're going to have in the future. Um, Nowadays, I think the main problem of this uh, um, AI approach is that it's hardly controllable. So if you get the good result, then great. But if not, it's very hard to change something. So in most cases, uh, it's uh, not that applicable nowadays to... Uh, actual production because usually we have lots of uh, uh, feedback and uh, iterations and so on and so on but at the same time it's just a matter of time because uh, more additional uh, parameters will be introduced to the models and uh, tweaking them you can get some control over the result and I, I believe that probably VFX could be such a area when uh, modern uh, approaches will be combined with the classical approaches. Uh, when you and because at the end of the day, uh, the result of VFX is something which highly likely to be 
um, perceived by the human eye as something natural. And that's why uh, and human eye is uh, pretty good at it, I'd say. And uh, I think that's going to be a future, like something in, in between, like combination of traditional approaches uh, with some AI, but controllable AI. And uh, speaking about keen tools, of course, we're going to like we want to be uh, in, in a first row and uh, on a top of the wave uh, of uh, all of these new things. Yeah, it's sort of like there's this uh, but, wave coming in called AI and developers are like, we better get our surfboard out and we're going to have to ride this or we're going to get clobbered. <laughs> so keeping ahead of the technology and adapting their software to that technology is the key, you know. Well, frankly speaking, uh, AI and data science is quite of quite expensive thing. And uh, if you want to, like, if uh, you invest in it, then you want your money back. And definitely, uh, VFX and cinema industry is not the richest industry that can be uh, like used for it. Like there's like. IT and gaming and lots of other stuff, which is uh, has more uh, money on the market, and that's why first all of this stuff gonna be adopted somewhere else, not not in VFX, but VFX of course gonna like uh, will get it as well, and uh, but a little bit later and in a different form like. Uh, and again, it should be highly controllable. And it's, uh, yeah, it's probably about future of the technology in terms of like the uh, changing the picture itself. But what also like I hope will be in future is like new uh, big applications. All current applications were uh, started in 90s and they have quite a big legacy which is really hard to change for instance like this new uh, no uh, new nuke uh, 14 it's really major step to to uh, to the future but it's not the future it's like adopting a technology which is uh, which was introduced like 10 years ago. And uh, uh, rewriting old stuff is really hard because there are lots of people who are actually use it and then you, sometimes you get some uh, not really handy stuff when, for example, you have a uh, uh, double list of all the nodes in your uh, shortcut like we had it like several times today and um, so I'm pretty sure that new applications new hosts new big uh, players will appear and um, and I actually even know what to do like the the whole architecture should be changed it should be like completely different. It should uh, be more on server. It should be easily scalable. It should you, on 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 a client machine. You should have just a like thin client, which is very responsible, uh, re responsive, and uh, snappy, and everything really blazing fast, and with all heavy computations on server, and it. At this moment, you get uh, collaboration stuff as well, right out of the box and so on. It's a uh, like whole new architecture of this kind of applications. And no application nowadays works like this, like no professional application. But in other areas, I see the trend and I see that more and more goes remote. Uh, but it needs quite a lot of... Uh, um, efforts to 
to get this kind of uh, application running uh, smoothly. And uh, nowadays, uh, many IT companies trying to port their applications. Uh, hopefully, we gonna have the same future for applications in VFX as well one day. Okay. Well, uh, with that said, uh, again, thank you so much, Roman, for um, your demonstration. And uh, what we can do is uh, we'll have some links below to the Keen Tools site. Um, also, there is a if you guys are new to Keen Tools, there's plenty of videos I could post at the bottom, as well as uh, mentioning there's a 15-day trial if you guys are using Nuke or even After Effects, um, or you want to, you know, either or. And oh, black. It's, it's actually all the same license. I mean, like, uh, if you have a GeoTrack license, it can be used in After Effects or in uh, uh, GeoTrack, uh, oh, sorry, or in Nuke. And the same with Face Builder. If you have a license, it can be used in Nuke or Blender. So <laughs> we do tools and uh, sell license to them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roman, for, for coming on. Yeah, so thank you for having me today. Um, yeah. See you in, in two years. See you, see you in two years. Yeah.